Well, praise the Lord. Um, past few days I've been pretty under the weather, so I haven't been able to share what's been on my heart, and, and I really wanted to. And uh, I'm not doing too great right now, but I just got to say this. I, I just want to try to be real about this and and uh, and ask the question, so where, where are we headed? What are we doing? And uh, I got to tell you, I'm 64 years old. I, uh, during those 64 years, I've had freedom to go wherever I wanted to go, however I wanted to go, and stay as long as I wanted to stay, as long, as long as I did everything legally. Now, there were some times when, when I was held up for a few years because of, uh, um, my behavior, the things that I did. And so, you know, I mean, <clears throat> robbing places just doesn't afford you freedom. But as far as, as far as freedom goes, I, I am so thankful that, that I live here in the United States. I've been free. Hallelujah. Jobs. I've been able to work when I went out there to work, I, sometimes I worked for for hardly nothing. I remember uh, I was in New Mexico somewhere and uh, trying to raise my family and uh, trying to get enough money to move on. And I got I got a job. I think it was like three dollars an hour or three fifty an hour, and uh, digging ditches, digging ditches and hard pan desert dirt. Now, I don't know if you understand what that is, but that's just about rock. And uh, we'd have a pickaxe and just break up that that hard dirt. And, um, and after a while, you could shovel it. And we had to do that um, from early in the morning till late at night in the heat of the desert. It was terrible. And I didn't make much money, but but I made money, hallelujah. And I was able to feed my family, and we were able to uh, get on the road and 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 travel and minister like um, like we were called to minister. I've I've had jobs where, you know, Paul said, "In I've been abased, and and I've abounded," and I can give you that testimony. I've made lots of money. Um, just lots of money, hands over fist, lots of money. And then there's been times where I haven't made a lot of money, all legally, praise God. But I've always been able to tend for my family. I refused to go to welfare and ask for a handout. I've refused to solicit money from people that I minister to. I don't ask people to um, support our ministry. Hallelujah. There are some who have stepped forward and, and recognized the ministry for what it is. And, and they've, um, without me asking, they've, they felt the Lord told them to support our ministry. Hallelujah. And, and I'm thankful for that. I'm grateful for that. But I'm just saying I, I haven't in my life, I haven't had to beg for anything as long as I've been willing to do the work that was required of me. And and the work is out there, or the work was out there uh, for all my 64 years that that I've lived. And, and if I had the money, I was able to go places. I was able to do things. I was able to um, buy things. I was able to have things. Hallelujah. Um, I was able to invest in ministry. I was able to go places that um, that other people wish they could go to. And it's only through the Lord's provision, hallelujah, because he's been faithful that way. He's just been good. And I don't know of any other country that has had these freedoms, hallelujah, and, and these freedoms have been laid down uh, since 1776, and 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 they've been written up in our Constitution. 
And we've had a great, great country. And I look around me and I see other countries that are socialist or, or communist and I've seen them fall. I see third world countries just uh, struggling and everything. But, but uh, the United States of America hasn't done that until this pandemic thing, until, until all of this uh, stuff that's been happening lately has taken place. The United States has been a wonderful, wonderful, it still is a wonderful place to live. I don't want it to change. I want there to be some reform. You know, the things that are going on right now about um, police brutality, you know, the, there needs to be police reform. There are police who abuse their um, power. There are police that let it get to their head and, and, and they're legal bullies or legal thugs or whatever. And, and they kill people and black people get killed at the hands of police abusing their power and so do white people get killed and so do Mexicans, all colors. And I don't want to get in an argument of who gets, you know, who, who gets killed more, what color gets killed more because that's really not the issue. Not for me. The, the issue is that there has to be police reform. There has to be something done so that this world, that this country can be, can be um, great again. Hallelujah. And, and all this junk that's happening out there can be put, put a stop to. You know, um, I put out a lot of videos um, about the COVID-19 that was going on. I've, I put out videos about the Democrats uh, wanting to impeach Trump. You know, I put out different videos about um, the things that are happening. And, and the theme of each one of my videos is, is that God says he promises and he's true to his word. He really is. That's why for these past 64 years, well, not all of them, 37 of those 64 years, um, I've never been let down. I've never, my children haven't had needs and, uh, and, and God supplied all of our needs because he's faithful to his promises. If we're faithful, he's faithful. Hallelujah. And even when we're not faithful, sometimes he's faithful. Well, he is faithful regardless of what. But um, the point that I'm getting to is, is, is I've always quoted Second Chronicles 7.14. I started a prayer walk up the Mississippi River praying for our country. And the theme the Lord gave me was in, in 2001 was if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and s seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I hear their voice from heaven, forgive them their sin and heal their land. And I've always thought positively. I really have. There's, there's a lot of things wrong with the church. There's a lot of things wrong with, with uh, the churches today. They, a lot of pastors, a lot of pastors, too many ministers. Um, they're, they're all about their ministry. It's a job for them. It's a, it's a way of income and, and it's corrupt. But I can never say the whole church is that way. It's not. It's not. But the church needs to repent and they need to get out of that self-seeking mentality that, that, that has brought us to the point where we're at today. I believe, you know what, if the church was about the Lord's business, I believe none of this stuff would be happening. This, uh, uh, they changed the police brutality thing into racism. And I believe that there's a lot of Christians, black and white, who have r racist um tendencies deep in their heart that when this thing started exploding into a racial issue, they jumped right on the back bandwagon. And they said, yeah, that's what it is. It's racism. 
get those white devils or her. That's what it is. It's racism. But it's all the black people. It's not it's not us white people, it's all the black people. Gotta gotta get those people out. It's not what it is. That's that's your heart that's saying things like that. There's an organization called Black Lives Matter. Um, back in my day, there was an organization called Black Panthers. Uh, there was uh, a Nation of Islam. And right alongside them were the white Aryans. Well, not alongside them, but opposite of them were the white Aryans, the um, KKK. Uh, today they have a group called the Boogaloo, and they're, all of them, all of them are racist. It's not a matter, this, this thing isn't about racism. They wanted to make, they want to make a race war, but you know what, the church, Christians shouldn't, shouldn't even be buying into that at all. The Christians should be just saying, you know what? We need to preach repent. There's a lost world out there going to hell. We need to link our arms. The church, black and white, uh, brown, hallelujah, Asian, what, whatever, whatever color you want to ascribe to them. The church needs to link arms. And the church needs to get real. And the church needs to start saying, you know what, not on my watch. There is no racism. By this will all men know that you're my disciples, by the love that you have one for another. That was Jesus' thing. That we would be one as he and the Father are one. But we've been so divided. We've been comfortable in our black churches. We've been comfortable in our white churches. We've been comfortable in our little um, redneck churches we've been comfortable in our you know, whatever I don't want to get off into all that stuff but we've been comfortable in our pews instead of doing the work that God has called us to and that's the ministry of reconciliation God wants us to to step into the ministry where we reconcile men to God God loved this world so much that he gave his only begotten son because he's not willing that anybody should perish. So all my videos that I've been publishing have been uh, videos of hope saying, you know what, a revival could come out of this thing. And it could. Um, it's not going to be as bad as what it looks like because if God's people will humble themselves and pray and do what God's people are supposed to be doing, then hallelujah. It, it, we're going to look back at it and we're going to say, look at what God did. That's been the thrust of my messages. But the other part of that is, is that big if. If God's people hear the word of God and if they respond to the word of God, yeah, you know what? I don't have anything against black people as long as they stay on their side of the tracks and I stay in, and I'm over here. That's a mentality in a lot of places. It really is. But it shouldn't be. And it's the same thing. that You can turn it around. The, the black people say, you know what? I don't have any problem with, with uh, white boys. As long as they stay on their side of the tracks and they don't come over here, they come over here, they're going to get a whooping. I've been threatened in so many black communities. I really have. I've been warned not to go down there because because a white boy carrying the Bible ain't going to ain't going to uh, walk out there very healthy. But you know what? All I saw, all I saw was people that need Jesus. Doesn't matter what the neighborhood is. I, I, got to tell you, I, I'm a white guy, 64 years old, known a great country, lived in a great country. Um, I've got black brothers that that uh, are around my age or or younger. Hallelujah, 
And they've lived in a great country. They've partaken of, of the freedoms that this country has to offer. And there are inequalities, but those inequalities will and have been being worked out. Hallelujah. <laughs> the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And that's what this whole thing is. You see, there's a uh, your Black Lives Matter um, uh, movement. Black lives do matter, but not the movement. Your Black Lives Matter movement, um, the the uh, Black Panthers, the um, Antifa, they're all Marxist. They want to bring the country down. They want to change this country. And when that happens, no matter no matter who you are, you're not going to like it. You just won't like it. You're not going to have the freedom that you enjoy today. That's just a fact. But the fact is, is that God's people have to move and we got to do something. If we want our country to remain a good country, there will be reform. There, there, there has been reform being, being in the making. But there's instigators that want to stop that because they've got a globalist agenda. And we can't let that happen, brothers and sisters. A uh, 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 brother, Eric Nixon, uh, wrote this. Um, he said, what if I told you that you're really not oppressed in 2020, but that you've been taking the wrong pill? When you detach your mind from mainstream media outlets and progressive liberalism education, and when you understand that you don't need to be part of the group think, victim, victimization, tribalism, ide ideology, and that it's okay to be a free thinker, you'll truly understand that the only person holding you back is you. I don't have to buy into that um, uh, white privilege or, or because I'm white, I, I, I have inward racism or whatever. No, back at you. Back at you. If, if you're saying that and you're a different color or whatever, back at you. You have racist problems, regardless if you say you're a Christian or not. If you're, if you're pointing at me and you're telling me because I'm white, I got these issues, you got issues. You got worse issues than me, I'm telling you, because I'm not pointing at you. I'm not pointing at you. I just think that I, I know it's not a it's not a skin thing that's going on. It's a sin thing. People need Jesus. Uh, another brother, Robert Weismiller, said um, this is a fact. Native Americans had slaves before the white man came here when they captured other tribes. In fact. Every people group incorporated slavery in some form since the beginning of man. It was only until Western world, only until the Western world, through a Christian spiritual awakening, that slavery began to be considered unacceptable and evil practice that must not be tolerated. It was only until Christians rose up that it was believed that slavery should not be tolerated. But we know there are still many Muslim nations on at least two continents that still have a sex, a slave trade. And then there's the sex slave trade that is a global and yet it's hidden in broad daylight. And it's going on. Children being, being uh, snatched under our noses for a sex trade. There, I was just reading about um, some some people that are incarcerated, I think it's in China, and the prisoners are being shaved, their heads are being shaved, and then they're being sold, the, the hair is being sold, what, what do they call that, weaves? They're being sold for weaves, you know, real human hair. It's coming from slaves. <laughs> And many people that are crying against slavery and, and, and racism and everything, they're sporting their weeds. 
We got to get real. We got to get real. This country will fall. Will fall. Will fall. I'm not saying it's going to fall, but it will fall if the church doesn't wake up and begin making a stand. Law must prevail. Law must prevail. All this destruction of monuments and, and buildings and small businesses and everything, just when President Trump was beginning to um, open up the, the country again and um, businesses were, were going to be opened up again, now they're destroyed through riots and, and uh, all of this stuff through a made-up racist scenario. It's all about police brutality. The necessity for poli police reform. That's what it's about. As I said, I'm 64 years old. I've had a beautiful life in this country, and I really enjoy this life. And I think if you were honest, you'd have to say, Praise God, you know, that's true. I've been free to do whatever I want to do, and maybe some of my choices haven't been good, but I've been able to do whatever I wanted to do. Friends, we can't afford to let us decay into the Marxist thing that Black Lives Matter, Antifa, uh, the Democrat Party. We can't let our, our country devolve into socialism. We can't. And we need to take a stand. It's it's up to us. It's up to we the people. This nation can still be one nation under God. Hallelujah, let it be. In the name of Jesus. I love you all.